Welcome to section 4.4. We are forming ionic compounds. And how are we going to form ionic compounds? Well, we've talked about ionic compounds and covalent compounds and what defines each one. But now we actually have to go ahead and combine them together. Well, how does that work? Well, it works just like this. You're going to get two ions. Let's say, for example, I'm going to get Na plus and Cl minus. Every ionic compound has a charge of zero. Right, keep that in mind. Every ionic compound has a charge of zero. So how am I going to make sure that this is balanced? Well, I have plus one and minus one. Is that going to equal zero? Yeah, I have plus one and minus one. So my compound would be NaCl in that example. I have one of each. Now, just like in algebra, when you guys do algebra, you don't write a 1 in front of the x. Same thing for chemistry. We never write a 1. We, if there's no number there, we always assume it's a 1. So let's do a little bit. Let's go a little bit harder here. We're going to go, let's go Ca plus 2 Cl minus. Now, what happens? I have plus 2 and I have minus 1. Does this balance out? No, it doesn't. So what do I have to do? I have plus 2 and I have minus 1. Well, I need to have two chlorines. What can I do? I'm going to add chlorines. Now, how do I form this formula? There are two ways in which you guys can form this formula. You can take the numbers here and you can crisscross them. So I took a 2 here. It's an imaginary 1 here. I can crisscross them. And when I crisscross them, you're going to get CaCl2. Or... I've seen this method before. I'm going to draw a box. Ca has a charge of plus 2. I'm going to go plus, plus, right? Cl has a charge of minus 1. So I'm going to draw a box, just like cubes. But I'm short. So how many more cubes of Cl do I have to add? I have to add another one. So in this example, are we balanced? Yep, I have two pluses. I have two minuses. So when I do that, how many cubes, how many cubes of Ca do I have? One. How many cubes of Cl do I have? Two. So I'm going to go ahead and write it. I'm going to go CaCl2. Now, we can do another example. Let's go ahead and do one more example just so we can maybe get the hang of it here. We'll go ahead and do one more example. Let's go Fe plus 3 Cl. I don't want to do Cl. Let's go Fe plus 3. Let's go O minus 2. All right. Now this starts to get tricky. Fe plus 3 O minus 2. Well, how do I form that? Well, remember there are three ways in which you can form it. Or really just two. There's two ways in which you can form it. You can crisscross the numbers. So we're going to take this 3, put it down here. This 2, put it down here. And we're going to end up getting F2O3. Or we can draw our boxes. And how are we going to draw our boxes? Well, Fe has a charge of plus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my box with three plus signs in it. Then, oxygen has a charge of minus 2. I'm going to draw my oxygen box, minus, minus. Now, and what am I short? I'm short of minus. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add a minus, but minus, minus. Well, now what am I short? I'm short of plus. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and add it. I'm going to add a block of iron, plus, plus, plus. Well, now what am I short? I'm short oxygen. I'm going to add another cube of oxygen, minus, minus. Are we balanced now? You bet we are. How many irons do we have? Two. How many oxygens do we have? Three. Combine that together, and we get F2O3. Now, one thing. One thing about Fe2O3, these numbers down below are called subscripts. And what do I mean by that? They're always below the element, and they're always smaller. So that is why they're called subscripts. They're always below the element, and they're always smaller. So I might see 
F, if I blow this up, F, E, 2, O, 3. Those are subscripts, and those are just telling us how much of the atom that we have. So, that is how we go ahead and form compounds. It's one of the ways in which we form compounds, ionic compounds. Every single ionic compound, every single one, has to have a charge of zero. So you have to figure out a way to neutralize it, and then you have to go ahead and either cross the numbers or do the boxes. Now, one last example that I want to do here, and here's the exception if you choose one way. You probably are developing a way that you like to do this by now, which is good. That's awesome. I don't care which way you do. Just do one of the two ways, whichever works for you. Let's do an example here, though. Let's go Ca plus 2, O minus 2. Ca plus 2, O minus 2. Do those cancel out? Yes, they do. Here's the tricky part, though. All right, so they cancel out. If you cross this, you're going to bring this 2 down here. You're going to bring this 2 down here. And you would get Ca2O2. Unfortunately, that's wrong. The one thing you have to look for when you cross your charges is that Ca2O2. If this was a fraction, could this be reduced? Yeah, I can cancel out the twos, right? And I'm left with CaO. I always write compounds in their kind of most reduced form. I always write ionic compounds in their most reduced form. So only if you cross charges do you need to look out for that. If you did the boxes for Ca plus 2 and O minus 2, it wouldn't be a problem. A box for Ca plus plus, what's a box for oxygen? Minus minus, how many boxes of calcium do we have? One. How many boxes of oxygen do we have? One. And we should get CaO. So just one thing to look out for if you prefer doing the crossing the numbers bit is that you do have to be careful of when they have the same charge. When they have the same charge, they're going to cancel out and it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So I know I was just kind of one slide, but it is very important on how to learn and form ionic compounds. This is Mr. Clinton, and I am signing off. Mm.